So a black hole is basically a spot in space, an object that has just got so much mass, you know, the same stuff that I've got and you've got that holds us to the Earth through gravity. It's got so much that beyond a certain limit, when light gets too close, even light, the fastest thing we know, can't escape. And that line is called the event horizon. The size of the black hole is basically the size of this event horizon. And so we've got a whole bunch of different types of black holes. We've got little ones the size of atoms called primordial black holes. We've got stellar mass black holes that are left over after stars go boom, you know, supernovae. And then we've got these intermediate ones that we didn't even know existed until really recently. And then we've got these super massive black holes. Now, these guys, they're enormous. They're just colossal. They're huge. They're like, you know, the mass of the sun, Yvonne, right? Yeah. Times by a million. Wow. At their smallest. Yeah. Wow, so imagine. these ones can go between a million and a billion times the mass of the sun. Uh, and yeah, basically, Basically, we think that they sit in the middle of pretty much all galaxies, our own included, and we think that they're related to how that galaxy grows and the dynamics inside that, that galaxy, even right to the start of the Big Bang. So tell us a bit more about Sagittarius A. How did this name come about, firstly? How hard was it to find and how was the image even captured? Yeah, so the name Sagittarius A star, first of all, it's not a star, it's definitely a supermassive black hole. And look, you've probably heard of the constellation or maybe even the star sign, Sagittarius. Well, about 50 years ago, scientists noticed lots and lots of strong radio emission coming out from this area in the sky that was actually within this constellation of Sagittarius. Uh, and they said, okay, well, what can we call it? Well, we'll call it Sagittarius A star. I know we're very creative and inventive. And then later on, we actually got a lot better at technology. We got better techniques and we were able to actually zoom in on that little area quite a lot more to where this radio, this strong radio emission was coming out. And we go, oh, we think there's actually a supermassive black hole here. Oh, but we've already wasted Sagittarius A. So we're like, okay, well, we'll call it Sagittarius A star so that we know that it's different from Sagittarius A and we know that that's different from Sagittarius. So that's the name. That's where the name came from, Yvonne, which is kind of cute. And uh, I don't think it really says good things about astronomers' uh, creativity, but never mind. I'm sure we can improve. <laughs> I think you deserve more credit than you, than you expect there. Um, now, this might sound like a silly question, but are we in any danger at all? Is it relatively close to us? Not really. It's actually a long way away. It's about 27,000 light years away. Uh, so it's it's probably, it's not coming for us at all. It's very, very, very happy just sitting there munching on the material that surrounds it and falls in. And actually, the reason that it was actually really hard to find, I don't know if you remember a little while ago, Bon, there was, I think in 2019, there was the first black hole ever imaged, right? And that was M87 star. And that is a long, long, long way away. But it was a bit easier to image because it was, it's actually a lot, lot, lot bigger than our own um, supermassive black hole. The one in M87 star is about 6.5 billion times the mass of the sun. So Sagittarius A star is, is quite a bit smaller, but it's still super massive. It's about 4 million times the mass of our sun. And you might be asking, well, it's black. It's a black hole. How on earth do we see something that is black? And you told me that light come, come out of it. So how do we see it? So what we're actually seeing is not the black hole itself, which is the centre part. Of course, nothing gets out of there. But we see this sort of material that sits outside. So I was talking to you about how, you know, if light goes beyond the event horizon, it falls in and it never comes out. Well, just outside the event horizon of pretty much all supermassive black holes and, and some stars as well is, is a sort of disk of material of gas, of dust, of stars. And that, that kind of goes around and, you know, loses momentum, loses energy and falls into the black hole and slowly adds to the mass of that black hole. And what's actually happened here with these scientists back with M87 in 2019 and also with Sagittarius A star is that you can't see this ring with, you know, light or, or like normal visible light or anything. We have to go back right down to the low end of the spectrum of the energy spectrum called radio waves, which you probably are familiar with, with navigation and, uh, you know, GPS and all that sort of thing and also communication. So they look in radio waves and what they did is they used eight different telescopes from around the world 
they combine them in sort of a special mathematics which enables these eight telescopes to act like one huge telescope. I think I've heard uh, the comparison of it's like looking at a donut on the moon. Uh, so they looked at this uh, supermassive black hole of four million times the mass of the sun, 27,000 light years away, by combining these eight radio telescopes. And what we see is this wonderful disk. Of, it kind of looks like a ring. And so we're actually seeing that glowing material, this material that sits outside that black hole. It doesn't, you know, go around in an orderly fashion. What it does is it bashes it, you know, they kind of push into place and there's lots and lots of friction which makes it glow and that's where those radio waves come from and that's what those telescopes have seen. It is really quite stunning. Now before we let you go, what other phenomena can we see in the sky over the coming nights? This is fantastic. So there's actually a lunar eclipse, uh, but unless you're in the Americas, Europe, French Polynesia or the western half of Africa, you're going for a travel, Yvonne, uh, you won't see it, unfortunately, not in Australia. Now, for the next few weeks until the end of the month, the end of May, you will, if you go out before dawn, uh, just before dawn, maybe about 5.30, you'll see this beautiful line of planets. So if you look to the east, you'll see Venus very low on the horizon. Then going up on the line, you'll see Jupiter and Mars. And then about two thirds of the way out from the horizon, you'll see Saturn. Now, if you watch this really carefully uh, over, you know, the next few days and then towards the very end of the month, you'll notice that Jupiter Jupiter's actually chased down and overtaken Mars in the sky. And one more thing before tw towards the end of the month, if you're still not sure, you know, whether you're actually successfully looking at a planet, I've got three dates for you the 22nd, the 25th and the 27th, because the moon is going to show you the way. It will be visiting its solar system buddies. It's going to sit just above Saturn on the 22nd and then just to the right of Jupiter and Mars on the 25th and finally close to and just above Venus on the 27th. And I have been told this by a friend, I'm going to deliberately misquote this, the moon's got bros in different area codes. <laughs> Oh, fantastic. And I've taken note of those dates already. Thank you so much, Claire. Fantastic. Always good to talk. Thank you, Yvonne.